Helen. It's been a while since you've seen you, but you're, you're at the Beat the Streets event. Um, yeah, talk about the events a little bit. You know, USA Japan and the atmosphere and everything surrounding women's wrestling this weekend. What do you see? Well, as you can see, everyone loves it. Uh, it's, it's been a great event tonight. So, uh, Beat the Streets is an organization that uh, provides wrestling uh, for children uh, that just uh, have opportunities like this. And so, this event is a benefit to charities raising money for that to go and uh, help these kids, help them learn wrestling. And, uh, and uh, so tonight we had Team Japan, which is number one in the world, and then we had uh, Team USA, who are number two in the world, so it's to be number one. Um, and so we wrestled tonight, and it's really amazing. What's it mean to have an all-women showcase like this with the two best countries in the world? You know, it's, it's a great exposure for the sport from women's wrestling. This is above and beyond. Uh, so, so amazing to see. I mean, I started wrestling 17 years ago. If you told me that we were going to have two all-women's matches, wrestling outside for a fundraising event and build a stand, I mean, I would have been really surprised. Is this the first Beat the Streets that you haven't wrestled in? This is, this is the first Beat the Streets I haven't wrestled in. And how does that feel, like just being able to sit back and enjoy it? It's, uh, it's bittersweet, so obviously I would have loved to have been out there competing today. But it's sweet because I get to sit back and literally just cheer, cheer on teammates, cheer on Team USA. And, um, there's, I, I can't explain what it feels like to wrestle in an event like this. It's, uh, it's incredible. There, there's really no experience like it. And so um, to miss out on it, it's, it's a bummer. When did you were announced that you were going to compete? When you, did you decide you weren't going to um, be participating in this? So I tore the UCL in my thumb about a month before Worlds. I re-heard it at Worlds, and then actually two weeks ago, it just got re-injured uh, when I was training. And so I thought I could get away with putting it off after my career. And the, the doctors at Columbia told me to go in, get an MRI, and they were like, that's it. And actually, when they went to compare it, just as it with my other thumb, which I thought my other one was jammed, they found out that I actually used to have both my thumbs. So it was like, what, two weeks ago or a week and a half ago that I like, kind of started reaching out and telling my coach and you know, telling Andy Barr. So, so we, we just kind of talked about what other opportunities were there. So I did a meet and greet today. Um, I love, I love doing everything. Well, I mean, you are the face of women's wrestling in the U.S., so you're still doing a lot of work. You're, you're, you're on the clock, as it were, here. And um, what does that mean? I mean, you know, uh, men's won the Worlds this year, and, you know, you've conquered your goals, but I know you've got to be thinking, I want Team USA to be on top of the podium. Yes, exactly. And, and what can we do to do that? Exactly. So I think... Things like this help all the time. I mean, we just had an opportunity to wrestle the number one country in the world, and uh, I think we performed great. And so, to have more matches like this and more support and more training with each other, that's really amazing. Um, one of my goals uh, since Worlds just has been to um, step, not step back from my training or competing, um, but right now, for example, since I'm getting surgery, it's been working with Beat the Streets, you know, helping write some programs, helping get out, and uh, you know, speak more to kids and, and to promote that. And so, to just kind of see wrestling not from that athlete perspective where you're just thinking about what you need but taking a step back and seeing what the whole sport needs and getting to just talk to so many people and use wrestling or USA wrestling and so um, I think women's wrestling is on the right path and I think we're ready to be number one in the world. You took a little time off uh, between uh, uh, <laughs> of Rio and uh, Paris and uh, I know I heard that you'd gone to your coaches and say hey I want to take some time off and they said, okay, that's fine, but you might not win Worlds if that's the case. And you said you were fine with that because you were thinking sort of big picture. Yeah. But you did take the time off, you did go up two weight classes, and you crushed everyone. So what do you do now to sort of, you know, avoid complacency, like not sit on your laurels? How do you, how do you be proactive in, like, wanting to test yourself? Um, that's a good question. I, I, I don't ever feel... Uh, Complacent. I think wrestling is a big sport. You can't ever conquer it. Um, you can't ever conquer wrestling, and you can't really ever conquer yourself. And so, um, sport for me is very humbling because it's, it's just a it's a journey of, of self discovery. And so there's always something new to learn. There's always something new to work on. So when I chose to step away after Rio, that was with the thought that I need to develop as a person outside of wrestling and what those challenges are going to be like. And even though they're not directly related to wrestling, when I come back, I believe it's going to benefit my wrestling. And um, so I think I'm just always looking for something new, and I have great coaches, great support, uh, everything, and everyone just helps me to, you know, to 
tackle the sport from a new angle and just have fun and, and do what I love. And, and I mean, you're a real technique junkie I love on this. It. And, you know, it's just amazing. Like, it always seems like there's something new that you're doing in a match. It's obviously not new. You're not making stuff up. You're working on technique all the time. How do you do that? And do you feel like your your ability to in, increase your arsenal has just gotten faster? You, that you're able to do it quicker now than you used to? Or? I, I've been wrestling for 17 years, so I think that's a, that's a start. I'm, I feel like I'm at this point in my career confidence-wise and, and ability-wise where um, you know, it doesn't scare me to learn a new move, to, to try something new at, at Worlds. Um, and also, I, I just uh, uh, given talent. Um, yeah. So, you know, my, my coach will he'll teach me something and he'll teach it to me and I'll do it completely differently. And he's like, I'm not even going to correct that because you just made it your own and it works for you, so just go hit it like that. So I'm like, okay. <laughs> wow, that's, so, uh, that's giving you a lot of latitude. Yeah, so it's... Uh, so, I mean, obviously, you know, you've, you've won three golds in a row. Um, you know, last year at the Olympics was special. You had a, a, certainly one of the, the greatest wrestlers ever to walk the earth, you know, in terms of recognition. What did you sort of learn being on the other side of that vision quest of defeating Yoshida that maybe you didn't know beforehand? Um, you know, I, I think people paint it as a David and Goliath story. And um, I... Yeah. Uh, for me, by the time that I got her, like got the opportunity to compete against Yoshida, she really became the woman that I looked up to, and um, so it was really interesting to just get to wrestle this legend in the sport. And I just remember this feeling of thankfulness. Like she could have retired after 2012, she would have retired a three-time gold medalist, uh, you know, 10, 12, 13-time world champion. And so I think it just makes you realize that um, the, the sport you just you show up, you wrestle on that day, you love what you do. Uh, you don't give too much weight to the wrong things or, or always what they mean. And, and so to get to wrestle Yoshida, that's, uh, to me, I took it as like a, a blessing in itself. Um, I wanted a gold medal no matter what. I, I didn't care if Yoshida lost first round and I never wrestled her. I, I wouldn't have even seen that. I, I just wanted the gold medal. That's what I trained for. That was my goal when I was eight before I even knew who Yoshida was. Um, but then to be in the finals and be like, wow, I literally get to wrestle li a living legend. Um, did the match go the way that you thought it would? I mean, like you, you had to have like envisioned that match a number of times beforehand. Yeah. But I, I, are you are you a strategic wrestler, or is it just like tactics? Whatever happens, the landscape of the match, I'll adapt to it. Yes and no. I am I am strategic, but I, but I will adapt, and uh, I think that's how most wrestlers are. So if you had told me that's how I was gonna win, and those are the moves I was gonna win with, I'm like. I never drilled them. I never, you know, I don't even know what they were. But um, but I, I just, uh, you know, at the same time, I'm like, I don't know if this is gonna be two to one or one to one or if it's gonna be crazy, you know, if it's 13, 14, this crazy back. I, I had no idea what it was gonna be. And um, just being in the moment, I think you're just, you're just thankful for what it is. I mean, what she said after the match was, you were just flat out stronger than she was. And like, how much do you like look to your strength? Uh, coaches for like how much of an impact did they play you know your nutrition obviously was a big factor with the cut as well like you know you're you're very technical obviously but you're super strong yeah. for the weight like how, how much does that factor into your wrestling like just knowing how strong oh, you are it definitely plays a part especially for a weight class like 53 mm -hmm. I I was like I don't know if I'm cutting this I don't know what I'm gonna wrestle like the day of you know the day of competition like I don't know how the weight cuts gonna affect me so I want to be the strongest the fastest the best wrestler I can be and, and just prepare myself as much as possible and so training with Charles Paul when my student coach was just slept beyond a genius and um, you know he's, he's preparing me and, and he would have me do these lifting programs and, and a lot of people around me even, even people I some people that I really valued would say like I don't think you should lift and if you're going for three you should lift and it was just like, okay, is it too many cooks in the kitchen? Is this a good thing? Should I do it or not? And um, just looking back, I'm so thankful that uh, to have Charles and his knowledge and, and to have done that lifting program and to have trusted that process um, because I needed it, especially like in a match against North Korea. Um, <laughs> yeah, you're, you're down 4 1 with yeah. like a minute 15 left. And so. that, I mean, you know, that's almost as impressive as your finals match. You know, just like how composed you were. And she didn't want to give up those points. It wasn't like yeah. one shot, you, you finished. Yeah. You know, it was, you know, two, three, you know, third efforts. And like, what's going through your head during those scrambles? It's going through, my, I'm not thinking. I, I wrestle <laughs> for God. I literally, uh, I pray. I just, you know, pray to, to compete free from fear and to go out 
out there and enjoy myself and um, it's just whatever happens, happens. Uh, so, you know, I, I'm, I'm in the moment, yes, but I think in those scrambles, like when you really love wrestling, you're just like, oh, I love this, like this is fun. Like I, I want to find a way to get out on top and, and score these points, but it's not like, well, they did this, so now I should do this. It's just, I'm just in the moment. And especially with someone like Yoshida, yeah. you know, I knew that you weren't going to win by having a good day. Not with Yoshida. I've never <laughs> seen that in my life, you know, because she doesn't lose. Yeah. So I think a lot of people have had really great days and maybe they got to the finals and they were a wrestler and, you know, they get stopped by her. So um, for anyone that thinks it was a good day, <laughs> no, it was a lot of preparation. I mean, it's one thing to do all of the work to do it in the preparation, but how did you sort of condition your belief? Because you believed you were going to win. I mean, does, does like Vegas play into that? Like, hey, I'm a standing world champion. I won this away class up. Um, so uh, I know I'm good. Like, or, or like, how do you cultivate belief to, to slay the giant? I definitely think Vegas helped. I, but I remember being on the podium and just kind of like, what does this really mean? I'm at a non Olympic weight class and I know it's, it's a big deal for everyone watching and for my, my parents are really happy, but there's like this sinking feeling where I'm like, oh, like you know, one more year to the Olympics and, and like, yeah, use this, um, you know, take a bite, enjoy it, but like you got, you still have a battle ahead. And, and so uh, for me, the biggest thing about belief was really just having God in the process day in, day out. I mean, it was, uh, it felt like a journey with him and it felt like there were times where the decisions I made made no sense. <laughs> and it was just a prayer like, does it make sense to pull out of the Pan Am trial and instead wait a month, make weight for the first time at the U.S. trials when you don't even know if you can make that weight and then 10 days later fly to Mongolia and do it again. Yeah. And I just felt like, yeah, you know what, last, you know, 2012, I trusted the process and the system and this is how you should do it and this is what you should do to win. Yeah. And, um, you know, and this time I'm like, I'm doing things that don't make sense, but I really trust that, that God's telling me to, to go this way, to do it this way. I need a little bit more time to get my weight down and then I'm just going to take this risk. And, you know, everything paid off and it's crazy because maybe, you know, in another you know, situation, maybe it wouldn't have paid off. And so it's just, uh, for me, it's just really being in communication with God and just step by step. You know, I didn't know I was going to win the 2017 Worlds. I really thought I took seven months off. I came back with a bunch of injuries. I don't even like, I just want to get back to where I was wrestling. And right. um, it was crazy because by the time Worlds came around, I felt like, oh, you know, I actually, I added a lot of new stuff. And I'm actually wrestling better now than at the Olympics because I'm not cutting so much weight. And, um, How did you feel strength-wise? Um, good. You know, was I, uh, I, I still feel like I, I still feel like I was the strongest. I actually feel like 53 was harder. I mean, the Olympics is it's uh, the top people in the world that qualify. So I was wrestling world and Olympic champs, you know, throughout the whole day. And um, I had extra matches at the Olympics. And so that was just, that, that, that was a different kind of, uh, different kind of toughness strength. So I did feel like the strongest um, 58 here, which is crazy because, you know, I came back and just started working with Charles again. And, and I told him, hey, I'm going up. Can we make it happen? And he's like, absolutely. So, I mean, you, you make a lot, you, you know, you talk about cooks in the kitchen. There's a, there's a lot of attention that's on you. And you've got, you're sort of faced with these big decisions. And do you consult with, like, like moving to New York or what weight class you're going to go or taking time off or not taking time off? Are those mostly things you just sort of ruminate with on yourself and tell people about it? Or, like, how much are you consulting with people and, and going with their uh, decisions on this stuff? Like, like you, like you, you seem like a really thoughtful person in, in, in like not impulsive in, in jumping oh, I, to these decisions. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. Uh, is it walk with the wise and become wise? So I'm like, I'll pull everyone in. Uh, I can get your opinion. That doesn't mean I'm going to take it on for myself. But I, I just want to know. Hey, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? And then I just, you know, see everyone's reasons and I'll say, okay, like, you know, I, I trust your coach. And this is what you say is best for me. I'll do this. Or sometimes. Um, you know, it's like, well, this makes sense, but I'm just feeling this, and, and so I don't know yet. And one of the cool things about Valentine is it was, um, you have to know yourself. It's like, I'm coaching you, but I don't know you as well as you know you. So there's times where, you know, Valentine will say, well, I think you should do this, what do you think? And I'm like, I, I don't know. I, I don't think it's like a, I mean, moving away to, you know, for or taking so much time off, I was like, I know it's a risk. Um, but I feel like if I don't do it, I'm going to regret it by the time 2020 comes around. I just need it. And I can't tell you why it will directly translate to wrestling. I'm just telling you I feel like God's telling me to step away and mm -hmm. to just be Helen and not Helen in wrestling. And now I come back to wrestling and and I'm like, oh yeah, because I am Helen and I know who that is now. And so I don't have to just be Helen the wrestler because I walked away and I was able to 
figure out who Ellen was. And I know it sounds super uh, emotional and, and maybe more of a process than maybe some of the guys will discuss, but you know, this is who I am, this is how I am, and, and this is how I treat my wrestling. It's uh, very much a part of me and what I think God's teaching me. And so, um, so I will take in a lot of opinions and, and just really look outside myself. Mm -hmm. What's so, next for you? What's next for me? Yeah. Surgery. Yeah, Surgery. After that, I'm actually do you have a time win? Uh, for wrestling? Yeah. So right now I'm really excited. I'm working with Beat the Streets on, on some programs. So we've been uh, writing a wrestling program uh, for, for school education classes. And that's just, I've been really passionate about that. I'm working on some other programs. So um, I, I feel like God right now is like, hey, you're getting surgery. And uh, you know, this is your time to like maybe reach out to some other things that you wouldn't be able to do if you were in, in sure. training. And, and so I'm, I'm really excited that those upcoming things I'll be announcing them soon. Um, and then first tournament back. I'm missing the World Cup in December from the surgery. Uh, hopefully, um, the India Pro League maybe in January, and definitely World Cup in March. I think there might be a tour before then. So it's about all I have so far. Um, you know, younger age groups are doing really well. You know, right now, and obviously with the success with the men, you know, there, there's been a lot of senior level athletes, junior level athletes working together. Like, what younger girl wrestlers are you excited about for the future of USA Wrestling? Oh my gosh, I mean, if you watch our junior worlds, you know, Maya, Tristle Paraday, uh, Gracie, I, I trained with Michaela. Um, there's a, I, I think, you know, our junior and cadet world teams are, are really something special. And if you look, like, a, a lot of these girls I was on junior world teams with, and, and here we are at the senior level now. And so those those junior cadet levels, it really does show you, like, the future of wrestling um, in, in the U.S. And so I think we got a good team. I think we have good programs, especially now with, um, you know, what is it, Wyoming Seminary. So we have... Oh, all, sure, with yeah, Adeline's school, coaching. Yeah. yeah, so, I mean, to have a three-time world champ now coaching young girls, or to have Aaron... Um, who was uh, Erin Vanderwall, <laughs> the new last name, she got married. Um, but, you know, to have her as a head coach when she was the assistant um, national team coach for so many years, and to have that knowledge, uh, those girls having access to that at such a young age, you know that they're going to develop and they're going to grow. And, um, it's just amazing. Okay. Okay.